Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Leo Vidal and what we have in front of us today is the Seiko NH36 movement. That's the Seiko 4A36 without a branding. It's an inexpensive movement which makes it perfect for a beginner to practice on. I'm going to take you through the disassembly step by step and show you every little detail. The movement is brand new, fully wound and has been on the time grapher for several minutes. It has good amplitude, it's gaining, the beat error is a little high, but everything is steady and it all could be adjusted. The goal of the video is to show you step by step disassembling this movement, but I will pop it on the time grapher after it's been assembled, lubricated and we'll see how it performs. The first part I'm going to remove is the oscillating weight. Normally whenever I can I remove the balance first but the oscillating weight is a little bit in the way so I'm going to remove that first. I need to hold it with my fingers because the movement holder doesn't have that much of a bite on the plastic spacer as it would do if the plastic spacer wasn't there if it was just straight on steel but it isn't so I'm holding it with my fingers so it doesn't slip out. I can remove it and now I can remove the balance itself. That's always one of the first things I will do whenever I can, whenever possible I will remove the balance. Take my time, no rush, we don't want to damage anything in here or anywhere else for that matter but the balance is the most delicate part so I'm going to take my time here and remove it. Not quite there, it will need a turn or two. Now that's removed and I'm going to use my screwdriver to lift the balance a little bit so I can get my tweezers below and lift the balance itself. I'll use my tweezers. And here we go, there's the balance. I turn the movement round and the next thing I'm going to remove is the C-clip. It isn't the easiest thing to remove this C-clip. It's not quite like some of the other C-clips where you've got a section where you can insert your hand levers or screwdriver under and lift it. This one is perfectly flat, top and bottom exactly the same. I'm using my hand levers but next time I will sharpen my screwdrivers and I will try to remove it with the screwdrivers. It's easily marked as you can see, it's most likely made from aluminium. The hand lever is under the C-clip and you can see it flying now top left corner of your screen and it's landing on the day disc. I'll move it a little bit so you can see it. There it is. It's straight. It could be straightened if it's bent. It's not really a problem. Now I'm going to lift the day disc. That's what it looks like from the bottom. Now I can remove the intermediate wheel for day corrector. The date indicator maintaining plate is held in place by four screws, which I can remove now. and the plate now can simply be lifted. This is the day date corrector. I'm releasing the tension from the day jumper. 
and now it can be lifted. Know that the intermediate day driving wheel is stuck at the bottom. Now I can remove the day dial, the hour wheel, the minute wheel, and the date indicator driving wheel. This is the day date corrector setting transmission wheel E. And finally the plastic spacer can be removed. I'm using my finger cords. It will be clean, but I'd rather not to touch the movement. Avoid it whenever I can. It comes off very easily. And there we have it. The guard for day date corrector in transmission wheel is held in place by two screws, which I'm going to remove now. Now I can remove the guard. You may be able to see the transmission wheel B at the bottom of the guard. I'll turn it round. There it is. And now I can lift the transmission wheel C. Now I can remove the cannon pinion. And I'll lift it with brass tweezers. The automatic train bridge is secured with two screws. And this one is magnetized. And the bridge can be lifted now. Now the second reduction wheel and pinion can be lifted. I'm moving the pole lever out of the way because the next thing I'm going to remove is the ratchet wheel. Before I remove the ratchet wheel, I need to release power from the mainspring. I'm going to hold the click out of the way and slowly let it go. power from the main springs being removed. There is quite a lot of oil on the ratchet wheel. The pallet bridge is secured with two screws. I'm going to remove them now. And now I can lift the bridge carefully. The pivots on the pallet fork are very fine, so I'm being very careful here. And now I can lift the pallet fork. The barrel and train wheel bridge is secured in place with three screws. They can now be removed.
Now the screws have been removed, the bridge can be lifted away. And this is the underside, which is going to be the next job to do. The reduction wheel holder needs to be removed, the lower plate needs to be removed, and also the spring needs to be removed. I'm going to start with the reduction wheel holder and get the pole lever out of the way. It can be simply done with tweezers. I can lift the bridge and expose the first reduction wheel and the pole lever. You can see the Seiko S4 grease there. There is a fair amount of grease there. Let me just move it and show you both parts. The spring needs just a little push on what you could call a hook, I suppose, and it comes off very easily. And the last part to be removed is the lower plate. I've chosen it to be the last part to be removed from the bridge because it's the least delicate part from those three I'm removing here. The click can be removed now. The fourth wheel. The escape wheel. The going barrel. The third wheel. The center wheel bridge is secured with one screw which can be removed now. I'm lifting the bridge slightly with my screwdriver here and now I can use brass tweezers to lift it. And finally the center wheel. The last section to be disassembled is the keyless work and I'm releasing the tension from the yoke spring here and now the yoke spring can be removed. It's secured with two screws. The yoke spring can now be lifted, followed by the yoke itself, and the setting lever, and the balance stop lever. The clutch wheel can now be removed. This is the winding pinion. I'm going to lift the day date corrector setting transmission wheel A with the stem and I'll drop the pinion on the bench. I'm going to separate the barrel and the barrel lid with a screwdriver blade gently. Turn the barrel a little bit. Don't try to do it in one place. Turn it a little bit and remove the lid. I'm going to turn the barrel arbor anti-clockwise with my tweezers to release the hook from the hole in the coil. The mainspring can now be removed from the barrel. Initially I will raise it with my brass tweezers. finding it very difficult on the camera I'm trying to keep in the frame for you guys but it's very difficult
I can now use my nails to hold the spring from springing out. Normally I grow my nails and I know that I'm going to be removing a mainspring from a barrel, but they are short this time, so I'm finding it just a touch difficult. That's the barrel disassembled now. And now I can clean all the parts. Currently I'm using the Elma S10H, which does a brilliant job. And yes, that is an airbrush there, what you can see. I use it instead of a blower when I'm cleaning parts because it's much quicker than using a blower. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did give it thumbs up and watch part 2 the assembly.